hot pot is like a universal pool where everything just seems to work. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of the fumes. Oh, oh, by the way, one thing I forgot before we start eating. I'll be right back. I hope what he forgot was beer. Hey guys, what's up? It's Mike Chen. This is a really special video for me because I have right next to me, basically my food idol. Thank you, bro. Adam, seriously, dude, I've been watching this man ever since the beginning. I gotta say though, I kinda, I kinda did the Asian way. I, I didn't pay for it, I just kinda like, I just found it. And... You mean the Jewish way? I mean, please, perfectly fine. I'm, I'm a big fan of yours as well. I actually, I followed him and we just started, I, I, we slid in through each other's DMs. Yeah, yeah, it was a little, a little, little naughty thing to do, but I'm uh, so happy to have you on the show, my friend. An honor, man. And today, we're gonna, we're gonna have some hot pot. You had hot Chinese hot pot before. I have indeed. Okay, in this place, we're at a whole year right now. It's one of my favorite hot pot places because their broth is insanely spicy. But not only is it spicy, it's also really flavorful. You've never been here. No, I've never been here. And what I also like about this place is that they also have like a bunch of like little drinks that we can get for free. So, you know, it's like an Asian thing, like free, free drinks, why not? Like <laughs> little tea, little. I I just walked Yogurt. past this place the other day, actually, and I was blown away by the amount of different broths yeah. that they have. But I will say, and I plead the white man on this one, that I've never felt that I've really lived up to my full hot pot potential because there's a lot of, well, what do they have? Or what do you recommend? And I know that very often you get like the whatever, but they do make it like super usable. Like pick your broth, yeah. pick your base. Get whatever you want. So like they have different types of broth here. We're definitely going to go- your dance. I'm going to trust you on this one. So we're going to definitely go for their uh, beef spicy hot. Now, what do you think? It's big spice or medium spice? Your dance, man. It's like I inherently know. It's like, well, I know the content will be better, but the pain will be higher. They don't kid around when they when they talk about spice. We're gonna we're gonna go do it. it. And basil pork. So then in terms of the accoutrement that come with it. That's the is that, is that usually oh we we select, we select oh that. my gosh. Okay. Alright let's let's get all the meat, right? That's Come on, let's just... I, I, this is again, I'm down for whatever. Pork belly, uh, shoulder. Yo, do you eat tripe? I haven't really had uh, tripe. Is it good in hot That's pot? That's good, That's good, man. It's you know good. what, I'll do it. I don't normally do it, but I will. No, let's do it, let's do tripe. Are you a big seafood person? I like seafood. Okay, you want some crab? So how do they do the crab? It's a whole crab. And they just you throw it in the you pot? You throw it in the pot, and you break it up, and you eat it. No As way. Is. Yeah, oh absolutely, gosh. absolutely. We don't get around in here. You gotta try this. This is a stuffed fish ball. Okay. But it has meat in the center. It's insane. Fish meat or? or no, 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 like like pork or beef in the center. Mm, that's so, the type of fish dish most of my friends would like. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Oh, here we go. Our broth is already here. Thank you so oh much. Oh my gosh. Nice, nice, and it's nice. cooked to induction. Pretty cool. <laughs> and is that like topoki, these rice cakes? Yeah. Do they work in the, the they work. hot pot? Hot pot is like a universal pool where everything just seems to work. Done and done. Else we... No, this is fantastic. Okay, let's do it. Let's hand it out to the server. You we know got. what? I feel I've not really had hot pot then. I truly feel now I'm out of my depth. <laughs> I right. feel that I've been <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of the fumes. You feel that? <coughs> that, that, that'll choke you. They aren't joking around with this. This is like the spiciest broth I've had anywhere in any hot pot place in New York City. Now that that's boiling, we gotta go do our sauces. I feel that I'm about to learn a whole bunch yeah, of nuance. I, I, I can't wait to share this with you because Please. this is like one of my loves in life. So really, let's go. Please, let's go sauce go, it up. Go, go. Yeah, yeah, sauce it. And this is where it gets kind of kind of tricky. Oh my gosh. Because there's so much stuff here, and if you don't know like what to put in, it gets a little overwhelming. First sauce is a very traditional. Chinese dipping sauce. So every sauce has to have either sesame sauce or peanut sauce, usually, because that's the cream factor here. So it's gonna be like three parts sesame and then one part chive flour. That's it, this is like the first sauce. I'm just gonna uh, make you one of mine, see if you like it. Hit it. This is Chinese barbecue sauce. Right. Sha cha. Garlic? All the good stuff does hit it. Yeah, nice. Cool. All right, a little sesame. Give it a little spice. Probably don't need it from the hot pot broth, but you gotta have some chili oil. And then a little sesame for some fragrance. Cilantro, chives, and then you want to add just a tiny bit of black vinegar for some acid. Nice. And then soy sauce it up. Now I had this sauce in Hong Kong and Hei Hei and it yeah. was almost like an Asian chimichurri. And I was like, oh, I wonder if I could recreate something like that. Yeah, go for so it. So then I was thinking maybe if I take some uh, good old negi chan right here, a little bit of green onion, maybe one or two jalapenos with seeds. Oh, look at that. I think that's brilliant because See. you're actually releasing more of the flavors of the greens right now. Here, why don't just take a pinch? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I think so far getting there. I think that there's some... a little spice and sour going on here. Very refreshing. And oh my God, this is gorgeous. Here is here, your, your mess. Here's your customized here's sauce. Your mess. So first thing we're gonna do is, this is uh, amazing. we always start with some meat because the water of hot pot typically, and I learned this hard way because I got yelled at a lot, is you put a meat in because you, the meat cooks in like 10 seconds, even less. And then 
the veggies actually go in um, the broth that doesn't have this uh, hot oil on the top because otherwise it soaks up all the oil and then your broth's gonna be left without flavor. And noodles go in last because they're gonna soak up all your broth. And then you get that noodle which is cooked in the hot pot broth, which is amazing. Okay. We're gonna start with some fatty beef. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do some hot spicy one, right? Hit it. Okay. And we'll do some on the non-spicy side. The beef is already cooked, I mean, really, really fast. And this is very common where we serve each other in a hot okay. pot. Okay, sure. So very it's bad. not like, you know, it's not like. No, I feel my etiquette is lacking. Wow. I like that the heat's not really aggressive. You know what it reminds me of? It's like a pepper crusted pastrami kind of feeling because of the thinness of the meat and it's pepper forward, not just like capsicum, like I'm here to kill yeah. you. Yeah, oh, by the way, one thing I forgot before we start eating, I'll be right back. Oh, but he forgot this beer. Right, I'm gonna try this in my weird slurry. Oh, I didn't try it naked yet. Mm. All right, so they have a bunch of drinks. I uh, got some soy milk, chrysanthemum tea. But before we eat hot pie, I forgot, we gotta drink one of these. Just Calpico? It's like that, but before hot pot, because the hot pot is kind of aggressive, we want to cold our stomachs first. Oh, too late. Too late? The well, first bite is already in, but hey. All right, here. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Ah, there we go. Now we can go crazy. What is this? This is just, it's just a yogurt drink. Oh, it's yogurt. Yeah, it's like kind of like Calpico. Got it. So it's um, meant to coat. Yeah. And I bet the, um, yeah, these like creamy sauces are probably like a gift from God. Yeah, so try try dipping in one. This is so this is the ancient sauce, kind of like the, the sesame and the uh, chive. Is there any more meat in here? I may need you to, to do a little bit oh, more absolutely, absolutely. meatification. Let me know. Let me know what kind of meat you're filling too. Let it rip. I, I couldn't even really necessarily identify some of the cuts. The fatty beef's my favorite because see that it's it's got like so much like 50 percent almost and bacon. I love. It's like Korean okay sangyeopsal you. almost. While we do that, we're gonna put in some Dude. stuff that's gonna boil a little longer. All right, so let's put in the potatoes. These things are gonna cook a long time. And the tofu? This is the frozen tofu right there in the middle. In the middle? Yep. And that's the what, like yuba, like tofu skin? Yeah, it's tofu skin. It's fantastic, one of the must have ingredients in hot pot. Corn is also fantastic in hot pot because it's a little sweet. And then once it cooks, it's a little salty, it's a little spicy, it's just magical. I think that's also what's kind of fascinating is that when you see the same ingredient in different Asian cuisines like interpreted. So I was just thinking about that like, Inari sushi, like when you have that bean curd skin yeah. and then you have in hot pot, like the same ingredient in a completely different incarnation. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you, Adam, because like it's my food idol here. I, I gotta <laughs> ask you some stuff. So hit it. Uh, okay, let, let's start from the beginning. When you were first filming Man Vs. Food, mm -hmm. all right, I just wanna know like how crazy was the film like timing? Were you eating every other day? The like first 10 episodes were super hard. Those, those, oh nice. First 10 episodes were a bit of a meat grinder to pardon the pun, uh, just because of the schedule. Um, because simply put, no one had filmed the show like that before. It's not like, ooh, we were such brave innovators, but simply put, in any kind of peripatetic travel food show, you could do a location a day because your host was sort of tasting and sampling yeah. and stuff, and it wasn't about mass consumption or painful consumption. But those first 10 episodes, I look back on it, and I really can't believe I survived sometimes. I remember vividly the day after the first challenge yeah. in the pilot. The pilot was Memphis. I remember that. We did this big burger. No one knew how to prepare. No one, I didn't know if I could do it, how I could do it, what methodology to use, how to prepare my body for before or after, as the case may be. Also, I didn't know how to maintain the on-camera comportment that they had just seen me demonstrate at one place. No one really teaches you how to eat on camera. like. For me, it was like fat boy travel food fantasia. Like, wait a minute, you're sending me, you're paying me to go to the rendezvous barbecue in Memphis, uh -huh. to meet a member of the Virgos family. Then you introduce me to the pit master who literally opens the pit of this ancient iconic Bayreuth of barbecue and goes, Hey, Adam, you have whatever you want, man. Help yourself. It was like I heard a choir of angels sing. Because They're like, you didn't, already. yeah, you didn't try the pulled pork? Oh, you should try. You know how he likes to eat the pulled pork? Make him one of your sandwiches. So this guy would toast it off and some of like the fat from something. I mean, it's like I'm dribbling now and I have delicious food in front of me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I go, all right, you're going to show up. You're gonna film six hours of high energy content. Hey, what makes you come to this restaurant? Yeah. Did you ever do this challenge? Blah, 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 blah. Now you have to sit there and eat a burger the size of a bar stool cushion while engaging with a camera. And people used to constantly give me grief, go, dude, it's a time challenge. But the truth is, even the network president said, I would rather you lose a challenge and keep it engaging than just sit there like a 
you know, like a yeah, vacuum yeah, yeah, cleaner. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I remember then we filmed at Gus's Fried Chicken and I recommend it to any of your viewers, to you personally, yeah. it's amazing. And I remember, oh my gosh, like I have to eat today. This isn't a matter of, you know, I'm a little full or anything like that. I had to put my body through whatever. And I remember going, it's a good thing this is the most delicious fried chicken on earth because how on God's green earth am I eating? So it was intense, but eventually I, I was blessed to have a little bit of a recovery day built into the schedule so I could cleanse and I could restore and I didn't have to dive right back into high fat, high salt, really rich comfort food because after a challenge, it's the last thing you want. Speaking of the challenges, by the way, I, I went to, I was in San Francisco and I did that. You remember that Sunday challenge you did? Of the ice course, cream? The Yo, that sink. thing almost killed me. I did that same thing. Horrible. And you know what? After that, I had mad respect for you because you did it in like, what, 40 minutes or something? I don't even remember, yeah. And then I did it. It took me an hour and I almost died. I felt like I was floating above my body at the last <laughs> bite because that thing was, it was just so much. I'm impressed that you finished it. And I also respect the fact that you even attempted it. I think a lot of people are very adept at criticizing the stuff that they don't know until they actually get in the trenches and I always really appreciate anyone who's willing to actually give it a shot. Okay, it's boiling. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I'm like loaded with meat right now. So. Well, someone's not serving me, so you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying, here we go. Okay, this is the frozen tofu. Okay, because otherwise go, I'm gonna that. have to sort of go for self like yeah, Akon yeah, yeah, yeah. says. Seems like everybody wanna go for self. Yo, you ready for this? All right, hot meat. This is crazy, hot meat. I'm hot. just so intrigued to see how like the broth flavors yeah. are. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> got peppercorn. Oh, oh you got the Is that Zechuan peppercorn? Zechuan peppercorn. Ah, so yeah. I'm getting a little bit of the ma, a little yeah. bit of the la. Well, you gotta have some ma with the la. You know what I'm saying? Like your hot pot, Zechuan hot pot especially. I am obsessed with Zechuan cuisine right now. Oh, are you? I've been reading just tomes, as many as I can get my hands on about anything from Chengdu. The way oils are layered, the way flavor is built, like spices like cumin that are distinctly almost Middle East. One of my favorite cuisines it, on planet it's, Earth. It's one of those cuisines where the spice, it's spicy, yes, but it's, it's got so much other stuff going on besides the spice. It probably is the most popular cuisine in China. Is it really? So speaking of uh, competition, we're not gonna spend too much time on, on the show, but I, I'm really curious to, to, to know what you think. What was your favorite uh, challenge or what was your worst challenge? Favorite is probably the Kodiak arrest in Alaska. Hot or spicy? The temperature heat. Is that the frozen tofu? Yeah, it like retains it. It's oh like made God. of fiberglass. I, I, I should have warned you, it soaks up a lot of the, a lot of the sauce. Chrysanthemum Milky. tea, no, just regular chrysanthemum tea. It's a very popular drink. Love this tea, fantastic. Oh, oh. So much flavor. It's always good in the dipping sauce. Yeah. Mm, delicious, really, really good. We're gonna put some veggies in just so we don't, we don't die from the meat. And these are the crawlers right here in front of me, right? These right here? You never had these before, right? I've never had okay, them Okay, so this is a very typical Chinese breakfast item. Like we literally eat this every single morning. It's deep fried dough. So these are great in a hot pot because they soak up all the broth. So these are gonna be hot when they come out, but they're magnificent. So you're saying the Alaska was your favorite challenge? Alaska was my favorite simply because Humpy's where the challenge was. They sourced so many great local ingredients. And instead of one portion of one thing that was gigantic, it was a gigantic meal. So it had a, a lot of other elements. So yeah. you didn't get flavor fatigue. Our worst challenge, I only lost one spicy one. I saw that, the, the wings, right? In Sarasota, mm -hmm. the guy actually admitted, like he said it on camera, he and his boys were like, yo, just add the whole bottle. And wow. Wait, what, what, what was the chili used back then? Ghost or? It was ghost, ghost, but it was ghost yeah. extract. And that's really dangerous. Tell me what you think of, of the meat on, on my wackadoo sauce. All right, okay. So that was crazy. He, that, that could have hurt. Like yeah, physically, it, it actually you. did. It did. It like in that moment. Yeah, I remember legitimately thinking, "I'm gonna check." Wait, I want to think. I think you were giving yourself too much grief. I think that's pretty bad. It's not bad once it's on something that kind yeah. of has a little fat to neutralize yeah. it. But you know what the thing was? I remember thinking, like, I'm gonna check out here right now because what happens is your nose swells, uh -huh. the mucus passages swell in your nose, yeah. and your throat swells. So I was like, I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. I can't. My, my tears burn, yeah. pretty intense. But then there are other people that, you know, one kid like stepped up and ate one of my wings and he was fine, so. What? Yeah, that was agony. Like, I never wanna, like like chili peppers say, I don't wanna feel the way I did that day. I went to one of your challenges, the uh, the, the Brickling Curry Challenge, and he told me when you took it, like it was, uh, he didn't use Carolina Reapers. So oh, wow. Went, yeah, the, the Carolina it. Reaper didn't even exist at no, that No, it didn't point. exist. And he, he upgraded it. And literally after I did that challenge, I don't know if you ever was like this before, well, when you did the spicy challenge, but I couldn't stand for two days. Like I would stand up and get dizzy and have to sit down. I thought I was gonna die. I Google, I was like, can I die from eating something that's too spicy? Yeah, it's crazy. There's like toxic levels. When I, habanero tends to be a, um, 
a bit of kryptonite for me. In Portland, Oregon, I did a challenge that was done with these habanero fritters. Yeah. I thought I was okay, and then I was in the parking lot. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I was in the parking lot, and I felt like I got kicked in the stomach from the inside by a mule. It was terrible. It was this the second season, going on third season now with uh, Secret Eats? Well, we, we shot two. We shot two seasons. Two seasons. Now you're going around the world. Yes. So what, what, do you, what did you like better? You're going around America? Or... I love it all. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be politic. I do love it all. I think it was helpful to do the first season in America. And I only it, ask that because uh, going abroad, you got the time difference issue, like big time difference issue. Huge. And, and also when people eat, what they eat when. I didn't know till we filmed in Warsaw. For example, kielbasa, it's a breakfast thing. Like, and I've had kielbasa at barbecues. So to ask for a kielbasa mm -hmm. in the afternoon and for dinner, you were like, looked at kind really? of weird, like little things like this. But no, I mean, for me, it was important that we did it in America first. In hindsight, looking back on it, because A, it was a new format, and so right. to try it in familiar ground was really cool. Yep. But also, like, America made me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, America, my audiences and my fans here gave me the opportunity to expand to a show that now, I mean, my, my, my shows are in 30-something, Mark is 36, I think is what I, I had heard. And like, it was good to ground it as like, okay, as much as I want to see worldly, I can't forget that I truly am an American abroad. Yeah. And what's important is never losing the perspective of the traveler as much as I want to be down with the local. Did you uh, happen to find a favorite city or country so far that you're just kind of like, this is, this food is just life changing? What I loved about it was the chance to be surprised by cities I never thought I'd go to, let alone eat in. One of our last episodes was Rome, and I remember we were eating in a town called Frascati. We were there for Porchetta in this little hidden place, and it was wonderful. They prepared this meal for us with this excellent charcuterie and this excellent cheese and slices of porchetta and wood-fired bread. And literally, my director of photography turns to me and goes, dude, next season, 12 episodes, all Rome? I was like, yeah, maybe, just maybe. I mean, the food in that city is incredible, but to be fair, prior to going on that trip, I had said, oh, you know, probably Tokyo is one of my favorite eating oh, cities. I'm about um, to head over there in a, in a week. To where, Kale? Yeah. I do a lot of food stuff. I don't do nearly as much as you do. <laughs> do you ever get to a point where you're kind of like, this is not fun anymore. This is like so much eating going on. Not generally, because I've been blessed that it's that my Thank you, by the way. No worries. That my field of purview isn't just like my buddy George Motes is sort of like the high prince of burgers, right? Uh -huh. His burger knowledge is terrifying. Like one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. But he's like a burger guy. I mean, he's just a smart man. He probably knows loads about other foods. But you know, burgers are his calling card. Myron Mixon, a good friend, the winningest man in competition barbecue. But he's forever going to be barbecue. The nice thing is because I came from a little bit of the fine dining thing and I've done the travel thing. I don't know. I feel like I could go highbrow, lowbrow. I could do a burger one day. I could be eating hot pot with you. You, as long as the story changes. I feel that if like I always had to do haute cuisine or I always had to do road food, yeah. me and my colon would not be psyched. Now you're traveling a lot for uh, um, for the show. And uh -huh. So now you're going to like a lot of different countries. Have you have you encountered foods that you're kind of like, I, I, I can't eat this? Yes, 110%. <laughs> By the way, potatoes are ready. Oh, okay. Now, I remember the you said that these are the you, best. You ever had in your life? Okay. I'm very excited about this. And it tests your hashi skill because if you squeeze too hard, they break. How's the potatoes? Delicious. Right? Really, really delicious. Crab's going in, all right? All right, done. So you got to eat that orange part. Uh huh. That's fantastic. So you were saying, like, what, did, what were you kind of like hesitant to eat? You know, and the thing was this I kept hearing my late father in my head saying, you don't have to finish it, but you have to at least try it uh -huh. because this is a food that these people love and you don't want to be insulting or rude. Right. Should we throw some of these greens in? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Here we go. Watercress, number one veggie Love for hot pot. Oh, this is the this tripe? Is tripe? You only cook this for about 13 noodles. seconds. Right now, not rubbery. It's probably good to go. Okay. Yeah, give this a try. <sighs> no dipping sauce or dipping sauce? Do whatever you need. Not bad, huh? The heat helps me with the texture. Mm -hmm. The one thing you have to get used to, here's the other piece, is that terry cloth like consistency against your tongue. It literally felt like when I have like, if um, I stub my toe and I bite the edge of my bathrobe. It's a good analogy. It, it felt like it was that fuzzy bit again. That was a little bit like, oh, I don't normally experience this. It's okay, a lot of Chinese people can't take it either. But here, try, try some Spam on Hot oh Pot. Oh my gosh. Hot okay. Pot Spam is the greatest That's thing. That's the best? Oh, it's the greatest thing. These to me in any kind of stew, because oh. they're like penne, they catch yeah. every flavor. All right. There you go, some for you. Thank you. Oh yeah, what's like Iceland. I wouldn't eat the fermented rotting shark. Oh. So people call it hokartle, but it's, it's actually pronounced hokartle. And um, that was vile. Is that the one that Andrew absolutely loved? Well, I don't think Zimmer liked Haukatl. I don't know. He was eating something from the Yeah. He, he loves he loves spending time over there and like eating that stuff. Yeah, the Haukatl is like fermented, fermented rotting shark. And you did you 
Did you try it? I did, I ate that. There's another dish called Hunkakut. Is dung smoked lamb. Dung smoked, like with crap. Yeah, and what they do is they, they let the rainwater wash it, so the only thing that's left is a sort of fiber, and that's a big fuel source because all the trees in Iceland were cut down a long time ago. Can you taste a poo in the food? Not at all, actually. It's, so they smoke it, and it's maybe a little earthy, but it's like dried like jerky and it's granulated and we had a pizza that has that on it. All right, wow. we're, we're going on to the we're going on to the noodles. Oh. But before we do that, check this out. I'm gonna put you an egg in the hot do pot. It. So this is like something that not a lot of people do, but it's great. First of all, here, have, have a crab. Oh my word. There you go, spicy crab. More broth? More broth, yeah, thank you. So where are you going next for your show? Next thing I'm doing is actually doing some charity stuff with Andrew Zimmerman for the Super Bowl. Oh, nice. I'm um, doing Taste of the NFL. I've been doing it with Andrew for the past few Super Bowls. Basically, we work with a chef in every one of the NFL cities, and we raise money for the food banks in every given NFL city. That's awesome. I love to do stuff where you hear so much about the Greek economy struggling, the Spanish economy struggling. I would love to do something where I could bring shows to these countries and increase tourism there and, and help these countries out in some way through ecotourism or econotourism, I should say. You've been to Greece already or no? I've not, no. So those are some of the countries that you haven't been, you haven't been to that you would really... I'd love to go there to and go. to film there, truly. I'm so excited to see this. All right, so egg is going into the, you gotta put the scoopy thing a little in the bra so it doesn't like, the egg doesn't stick. Fascinating, I can't wait to see how this comes out now. Yo, you like your egg more runny or more hard? I like the yolk runny, but you could set the white. I'm just trying to see the, <gasps> that's right. it? I mean, poached egg and this all This is broth. absolutely the coolest thing I've ever seen. Right. I never would have thought to do this. Kind of crazy here. Here we go. Oh, look at that, dude. <laughs> All right, That's so it's, awesome. I, I messed up a little bit. It's still a little sticking to my to the little ladle thingy, so I'm just trying to break, not break it. There you go. Oh my god, look at that. And then we're gonna finally do the noodles and it's gonna soak up our broth. Does this, does this remind you? of uh, Timberlake's hair when he was dating Britney. You're the first person that thought of Justin Timberlake while getting hot pot, I'm sure. But oh. that does remind me of his hair. How do you yeah. feel our Chinatown ranks among, because obviously this, this great Chinatown is in so many cities. New York has Chinatown, you know, like there's- But then you go to Elmhurst or Flushing, yeah. and it's China. It is, but I, I feel like the best place, probably the best with the chi best Chinese food, uh -huh. I would have to give it to LA. San Gabriel Valley? Yeah, San Gabriel Valley, um, basically it's like cities of Chinese stuff. You know what I mean? Arcadia. It's, it's Arcadia. Uh, Alhambra. Uh, exactly, Alhambra, like it's just everywhere. The you egg was the, awesome by the way. The egg got, was you, stupid good. You, you gotta do that with the egg. Do you have a favorite kind of instant ramen? Oh man, I haven't messed with instant ramen in a minute, man. The, the amount of sodium, I remember when I looked at grams of sodium, and so a four digit number. You gotta level up it. You gotta like, just take the take the noodles itself and do something with it. That's what I do. My grandma made sure she yeah. used to use them like croutons. Yeah, here's a corn. This uh -oh. thing is sweet and spicy and Are the salty. dumplings allowed to come in yet? The dumplings are, are cooked already, so oh, I'll, okay. I'll get I some Oh, okay, you already put some in. But yeah, you gotta try these noodles. For the amount of stuff you get and the size of stuff you get, the size of bowl of t plate you get is a little intense. It's like I'm doing a lot of real estate negotiation you here. Thank you. This is my, my favorite thing to do is, is all you can eat hot pot because you can, you can water off your menu, but typically like each plate of beef will cost you like 10 bucks. Uh huh. So I I'll typically eat like 10, so then that's not really worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was funny and it's hot. Mm. What so, is your stance on the slurp? Still like the Japanese oh, one? Oh, slurp it. Meant to be slurp. Slurp it. And, and what you can do as well with this is, uh -huh. probably works better with this broth. Uh -huh. Put the broth in the ramen, make it a ramen noodle soup. Okay. And this is gonna make you really happy. So what is like the base of these broths? Well, the spicy one is mainly just like chili, hot oil, uh, peppercorn. Uh -huh. The broth itself is more chicken, but sometimes like some restaurants, they actually stew the, the, the beef rib. So usually when they, what they add for you, it's usually chicken broth. This one, I think they actually stew the ribs back in the kitchen, so that's where the uh, beefiness comes from. Got it. It's like um, like a treasure hunt. That's the beauty of hot pot is when you get down to it, it's like you find some ingredient that you love. It's like finding gold. So where, where can people see see this new show? So Secret Eats airs two episodes every Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern on Cooking Channel, and then they air the previous week's episodes, I believe, in the nine o'clock hour before it. And literally, we did just this past year alone, 17 cities, 14 countries, five continents, Highbrow, lowbrow, and the thing is, my father 
Me and Recipes used to say, respect for respect. And I'm proud to say, like, if you want to see completely real, like, we kept the cameras rolling the whole time. Yeah. Fun, legit, uninhibited travel through the places that not only tourists don't go, but locals don't even yeah. know about. That's what Secret Eats is. And I love the fact that I get to show my crew because those guys work their butts off. And to be able to show the people behind the camera means the world. I was going to mention that because um, yeah. I, I love your style in this one. Thank you. It's almost like, like a vlog. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's really, I'm not... No, I'm just saying, I, 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 I no, like I what I like. I appreciate that. But I love that, you know, you are interacting with your producers, your camera people. I mean, that's awesome. That's kind of like, it's almost like YouTube, some little YouTube style mixed in. Personally, I like it because I like that people will see the crew giving me grief and us busting each other's chops because that's the joy of traveling. You're about to travel, you know as well as I do. Yeah that a lot of times the greatest adventure is not hiking that mountain, but it's sort of late night when you're looking for ribs or fried chicken and you find it in this alleyway because of this taxi driver. That's the greatest adventure of all, I think. You're totally right. By the way, on the Hong Kong episode, yeah. did she break their window or what, what happened there? In uh, which? When you were trying to find the speakeasy, did, she, did, she, did your producer break the window? What happened? Yeah, it, oh, is it the, still broken? Did you pay for that? It didn't break. It just, um, it rattled the frame. Oh my God, that's so funny. I forgot that. Nothing was broken. The one place, the Dai Pai Dong, yeah, in the yeah. middle of the city, yeah. that was the hardest thing because a lot of people didn't want to be filmed and it's in this big public area, but also the government is trying to phase those licenses out. So we were like, had to kind of go guerrilla style. Yeah. Well, how did you do that with all the big cameras? Well, literally, we just had a, one camera with the other guy filmed it like a long lens and we did it really quick so we would like huddle and go okay he's gonna make you the razor clam dish let's make sure we talk about that sauce yeah. let's define what wok hay is and go we went back in there so tell me about the sauce the interpreter would interpret yeah. that line da -da 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 -da. we just let him cook i'm gonna cover it in voiceover keep going Yo, that's crazy because you're, you're literally experiencing like crazy headachey issues with filming in asia because especially in China, oh my God! Like people don't want to be, they don't want to be on camera, on camera. We had to have someone from the government of Vietnam, mm -hmm. someone from the government of uh, Thailand, and someone from the Russian government actually on set to watch you or to tell other people it's okay. To watch us, to make sure that they were not being, we weren't being disrespectful. Oh, wow. We weren't casting their country in a bad light. Moscow, Russia, they had to actually see our script in advance. We had Whoa. to get a second passport. I had to send them the passport months in advance. The Russian government will only stamp the passport when you're leaving on the page with the bear in the back they like skipped oh. four or five pages ahead and they know our wow. our passport book well enough and they did that for my whole crew whatever you see is like a hundred percent real like we almost couldn't leave vietnam because they didn't trust us that our batteries That's were for cameras crazy. how did they monitor you so close like i know it's different but when i go it's like whatever no one cares but like i mean not no one cares but like I don't have to tell the government. So you guys have to tell the government you're going? On my honor, we have a picture at the Rung Rat Floating Market. I, I, if you're a noodle fan, if you're a Thai food fan, that we filmed there, they have the Rung Rat Boat Noodle. That's where they actually have the boat noodle. The museum is on that boat. We had a, a member of the government who wanted and like corrected my pronunciation on something. She didn't get a joke. She wanted to know what I meant by it. Um, so like, there was a type of noodle called selek. Yes. So I grabbed some and I went, look, it could be my mustache. And now I'm Tom Selek. So the Americans laughed, but then they saw me grab their noodle, mm -hmm. say a word that that woman said to me, yeah. and get a laugh. So if they thought you were insulting the noodle dish, or, or something. the country, or the language, or Tom Selleck, or she she just really loved Tom she Selleck. Big Mag well, I'm a big Magnum PI fan, yeah. so I, I'll fully cop to it. Blue Bloods. But that's what I'm saying. Like to be able to say, oh, this beef stroganoff tastes like the filling of the most decadent beef pot pie. And if you get that. Then, then I don't have to sit there and break down. Stroganoff was a lord who Absolutely. had a toothache, yep. who did that. You don't want to. Absolutely. It's like, I love, I love you and you, you, what you do because I'm not Asian. I don't have a fraction of your knowledge, but you impart it in a cool, very approachable way. And I feel that's what Man Finds Food and Secret Eats, now Secret Eats, has always tried to do. Everybody deserves to feel like the man. Everybody deserves to feel like they know the end thing. And I promise you, these restaurants, are independent, they're great, they're inventive, and they deserve all the business in the world. No, I, I, I truly love the new show. Thank I mean, you, I, I'm, I'm, cool. I'm making my way through it, I love it. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming and sharing a hot pot meal with me. This is like literally one of my favorite uh, episodes on this channel because literally, Thank like you. I said in the beginning, like I watched you, like ever since the beginning. And not to say anything uh, bad about any other food hosts because I love I love a lot of them. Uh -huh. But you're, you're my favorite because I feel like you're the most like laid back and Thanks, dude. relatable, earthly, 
dues share share. Oh, well, excuse me. <laughs> and you spit on me it's just nice, now. So. It's nice to use Chinese and it's bad to spit. <laughs> but but really, uh, share yeah, share. I mean, it's my first time meeting you tonight, but it's, you know, dude, you are Starting a beautiful awesome, friendship, friend. man. You're, my, you're no, awesome, and, and Well, same thing. And I admire you and the internet is not short of food people and you have a really good, unique voice and it's why I jumped at the chance to be here. Well, I appreciate that. And, and guys, I have all of Adam's uh, uh, information for his show, for his charity. Everything is in the description box below. Check out all his social media. It's all there for you. Thank you so much again, man, for joining me. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And tell we all eat again. Thanks, guys. See you later.